As we've already mentioned, amplifiers are able to increase the signal strength of a signal, either by increasing the voltage or the current, or both of them. And we also have uh, compared those to a transformer, where in a transformer, the power into the transformer is equal to the power out of the transformer. So if you have a transformer that is increasing the voltage from the primary to the secondary, the current will decrease from the primary to the secondary so that in a transformer, power in equals power out. On the other hand, an amplifier has the ability to increase power. So while it is true that the overall power associated with the amplifier must be conserved, we can't get more power out than we put in, what we're going to see is that the signal power will be, or that the amplifier is capable of increasing the signal power at the load. And this increase in power in the signal comes from the DC sources that are connected to the amplifier. So here we have a, an amplifier, a schematic amplifier, with an input signal driving a load being powered by two DC sources. This one referred to as VCC, this one referred to as VEE. Historically, there's a little bit of a legacy terminology here. Back when we were dealing with vacuum tubes, and, uh, well, with vacuum tubes, there was one terminal that was called the emitter and another terminal that was called the collector. When transistors came along, the bipolar junction transistors also have an emitter and a collector. And so this, this terminology, these names of these two supplies, is something of a legacy tied to that. This refers to the collector voltage, or the positive power supply, and the, uh, the negative power supply is referred to as the VEE, referring to the emitter. So we don't know what's inside here. There may or may not be bipolar junction transistors inside that amplifier, but we still sometimes refer to the power supplies. Um, they refer to the collector and emitter, but that's just an aside. So here we have these two DC sources. The positive source is sourcing current into the amplifier. We're going to call it I, C, I sub C, C. And when you've got a negative power supply, then um, current flows from the amplifier into the negative source. And we have then two different input sources. We can say certainly P in must equal P out. But in an amplifier circuit, P in consists of the signal power in, call it P signal plus P DC, the power from the DC sources, and that then is going to equal the, not R, the uh, power to the load plus any losses associated with the amplifier itself. So the power on the inputs, or the power coming from the signal will just be the the in there times I in, if we reference the input current from the signal, I guess we use it like that, going in, plus the power from the two power supplies. So that would be plus VCC times ICC plus VEE times IEE. So we have three different sources of power all combining inside the amplifier to give us then the power to the load plus any of the losses that there may have been. Now this schematic here is basically the same thing as over here, but here we explicitly show the two DC sources. Here those have been left off and the positive power supply or the positive, the, the terminal for the positive supply on the amplifier is tied simply to VCC and the negative terminal here is tied to negative VEE. So the voltage levels of our power supplies then become the limiting factors of the amplitude at the output. You can't get an output voltage any greater than the positive power supply, nor can the output voltage go any lower than the negative power supply. So we have here represented, and first of all, um, this is going to be a graph showing the input voltage of the signal and comparing it to the output voltage, or this is the output voltage as a function of the input voltage. So we have the negative source here, we'll just to be consistent with the terminology in the previous slide, we'll call this negative VEE. And up here we have positive VCC, and those then become the limiting 
values of the output. Those are sometimes referred to as the rail voltages, or they delineate the range in which the output voltage can run. Now, this line here, then, is a function V in versus V out. And the slope of this line, then, is the gain of the amplifier. And in this case, since we're talking about V in versus V out, um, it would be the voltage gain, A sub V, is the slope of that line. And we would have, then, that V out is equal to the gain of the amplifier, A sub V, times V in, at least within the, this linear range. Now, what is the extent of the linear range in terms of the input voltages? The input voltage can come up to this point because, at, and no greater than that, at least, and not remain within this linear range. So at this point right here, where Vn equals Vcc divided by A sub V, for values of Vn less than that, and greater than negative VEE divided by A sub V. So for values of Vn between those two limits, the output will be a linearly scaled version of the input. But if the input is allowed to exceed those two limits, the output can't exceed the power supply. So A sub V times some number here, greater than this point, would attempt to go beyond the power supply, but the power supply can't, and it is limited there. So let's just look at how that, how we can proceed with that by now implying a time axis coming down here. And here we have a function of time, the sinusoid. And it stays well within the extremes. And so for a value of V in here, there's a corresponding V out there, which then gives us this amplitude, amplified version of the input. But when the input is allowed to exceed the linear range, it tracks up to the point that the output hits the rail voltage. Can't go any further than that, so it just clips off that peak and comes back down. What I'm showing here is that output voltage as a function of time. If the power supplies were to allow it, the output voltage would have gone up to 20 volts. But here we have a power supply at positive and negative 15 volts. When the output gets to the 15 volt rail voltage, it's limited to that point and it's clipped off and continues on clipping off the negative lobe also. This type of distortion is known as nonlinear or harmonic distortion. And under normal circumstances, linear amplifiers are intended to work without adding distortion.